If you're new to my channel, welcome. If you're not new, welcome back. This is where we left off last time. If you're not sure of how we got here, I'm going to leave a link for the playlist in the description so you can follow along from beginning to end. Without further ado, let's get into it. If you were watching the previous episode, you may have noticed that when I seeded the database, I had the images in wrong. I only put two letters for the extension. I've gone ahead and fixed that in the code, so that's all taken care of. I just wanted to address that so we were all on the same page. Fantastic. Let's head into the text editor. Well, one of the things that I wanted to focus on in this project in particular is using more components and extracting large sets of code into their own components and into their own sort of data structures. That's going to be one of the highlights of what we're doing. So in here, what I'm going to do is in the welcome page, I am going to include the app layout. This is going to be the app layout that came with the installation and we need to import it down here. And we also need to add it to our components down here. Why don't we go ahead and take a look at that app layout? It has a bunch of stuff that we aren't going to be using a good portion of it. So what I'm going to do is I am going to start removing the things that we don't need. For example, we aren't using this jet banner. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that. And that means that now I can get rid of it from the imports. And now we can just head up top and continue on. Min height screen is the same. All of this is the same. Flex logo. This is going to be a link, but this is now going to be welcome. And we're not going to use this application mark. So we can go ahead and say folders shop. If you remember, this welcome is coming from our routes. And we did that in the first episode where we created a controller for the welcome controller. We can also get rid of this. We're not using this and head back to the layout. I'm thinking of changing the styling on here and bringing in a different font to do it. So if that's something that you guys want to see me do in terms of bringing in a Google font, then you let me know and I will go ahead and do that. Just let me know down in the description. We are not going to be using navigation links. This team's drop down, we're definitely not going to be using so we can get rid of that. Okay, so from the settings, let's see. Here we are not using this drop down. So in place of that, we're going to do. OK, and then in here, we're going to have a couple of links. The first one is going to be that dashboard that we just deleted. And for the classes, we're going to have a hover, X, yellow, 500, and transition. And here we're going to say VF, page, props, user. And then for the link itself, it's just going to say dashboard. And under the link, we're going to have a template. And the template is going to have V else. And here we can just copy these. And I need two of them. This one is going to be to register. Register. And then we're going to take out this VF because it's already implied. This one is going to be login and again v if is implied so here we'll just put login now here we're just going to make the links but we aren't going to send them anywhere yet copy this okay so this first one we're just going to remove the route and add a hash and it's just going to say shop and under here we're going to have a form you can just go ahead and grab this for now because it's the same one that we already have so it's just going to say log out and we'll make sure that the method is down below let's go down a little bit and we actually need to grab another one of these under the form we are just going to have a link. This link is going to be for our shopping cart. So the hover will be text red 700 transition. And then here we're going to have a span with the classes of BG red 600 text white text cess rounded medium B1. And this will be absolute. And this will make sure that everything is positioned for the cart so that when it has a counter, it'll be able to display it properly. For this, we're also going to need some styling on it. So style equals top. And I only do this because uh, Tailwind doesn't allow you to get as fine grained as the as also adding styles. So this is going to be minus 10 pixels and right minus 8 pixels. And that should line it up really nice for us. For now, we are just going to hard code. I'm just going to put in three for now. Under the span, we're going to go ahead and add an icon. 
and this will be the little shopping cart and since we're going to have a lot of icons i'm just doing this temporarily we're going to make a component for it this is just temporary so let me add some classes to it Okay, and now that that's done, let's go ahead and head down to the hamburger. And the hamburger, we're not changing anything on the hamburger as of now. Responsive nav menu. And here we're going to display some things conditionally. So let's add, we're going to need two templates. So the first one is just going to be VF page props user. And then we can take this and bring it up. And that's going to go to the dashboard. This is going to be B else. I'm just going to copy this. This is going to be the register. We won't need an active link for this. Register. And then we'll make another one like this for the login. Now we can go ahead and copy this one and under the template, slide this over. This one, we're going to take off the href. This is going to actually go to our shop page. And again, since we don't have the page, we'll just say shop and this will be a hashtag. Okay, let's get one more. And here we'll add an actual link. And the href isn't going to point anywhere because we don't have it yet. Remember, today is just about styling, so we want to know what it's going to look like. I'm just going to go ahead and paste in all the classes for this because it's a lot. Okay, and it's just uh, some hover state. It's basically a similar looking link to the other stuff up top. And again, we're going to put the cart. So let me copy that. And this one is going to have the text red 700 under it. We're going to have a span with the class of ML-2. And then here we're just going to say three items in cart. So this will be the drop down for when we have smaller screens. So you'll be able to see it. Once we load up the page, I'll show you better. If we get down to the responsive settings in here, we're just going to say VF age props user. We're not going to be doing any of this stuff in here. So we can get rid of this. And we can get rid of this. And actually, let's hold div. Open this up. We're not using this. Or post, submit, log out. It's fine. Again, we're getting rid of team management. And now we're on to the last bit, which is the page heading. So this is not going to be BG white. This is going to be BG gray 700. It's going to be PY2. EX4 is the same. Large PX. Okay, that's fine. And then here, we're just going to have an H2 with the class of text white, text center, and leading tight. And in it, we're just putting a little lorem that's too much. And make that a period. It's fine. A little Latin. Page content. Main slot. Under the main, we are going to have a footer. Now, I'm just copying it in for now. I'll show you what we're going to do with that in a bit. We just want to know what it's going to look like. So lorem. So we have our footer. Let's go ahead and get rid of the things we definitely aren't going to need that will throw up an error. So the application mark we're not using anymore. Drop down link we are using and the responsive. And this I want to bring up just to make it a little clearer. And I'll do the same for down here. I like to keep these together. We can go ahead and get rid of this nav link, which we're not using. The show is the same. We can get rid of this switch the team since we're not using that functionality. Okay, why don't we go ahead and take a look and see just what has changed if we've broken anything. Now that looks a lot better. As you can see, we have our title. And don't forget, let me know if you want me to pull in a custom font for this coder shop, which I think would make it kind of look better. I just don't know which one to pick. If you guys want to pick one, let me know. If not, I'll choose my own. Okay, so we have a hover state here. We just need to open this up a bit more. So the first thing that I want to really change is this local host up here. I wanted to actually say coder shop. If we take a look at the app layout, head all the way up to the top you see that we have a head component in here this head component is actually coming from the inertia view 3 installation it is made dynamic so that you can put your title on any page that you have this app layout forgot to get rid of this 
And as you can see here, it's a component. Everything is already imported. For the welcome dot view, what that means is now on this app layout right up here, we can put the title and we'll just say it's welcome. Because we have that now, we no longer need this head. And we can also remove it from here. In our .env file, we can change the app name to whatever your app name is. Mine is Shop. And the other place that we can change it is in the app.blade.php. This in here is going to be coders shop. So let's go back and see if that was fixed. Okay, cool. So coder shop is up here and we also have our welcome. And now that's coming from the welcome component. Now let's head back to the text editor because I want to start filling in some of this stuff. I'm just going to paste in a bunch of code so that you guys don't have to sit there and watch me do it. Basically, we have some images and I've already included them in here. I will also leave a link to these images from my Dropbox. I'll leave the link in the description for you guys so that you can access them. The images that we have so far is uh, this is the one that we brought into the database. So it says, sorry, no image available. And that's the, just the default image. If a product doesn't have any and here is the handcraft this is going to be for our main you know sort of big hero thing up at the top once we get everything in and sorted let's take a look and see we're going to have some buttons in here this is just a temporary holder for now those are going to be for categories this we don't need this just yet get rid of this and just make this a hash and get rid of this here we'll just put blah images. We'll grab the default image defaults no image dot jpeg. And then here I'll just get rid of this for now. Okay, so that should be fine. And then we just have a bunch of text that's gonna lie in the middle. And that's pretty much it for now. So let's go and see uh, just how much we broke. Okay, cool. We definitely need to get some other things in here. I'm, I'm missing some styling, so that's fine. Let's go back and fill in those blanks. I have this site images in this images folder, but in here it's not. So what I do need to do is go ahead, drag this and move this up to the correct folder. Okay, so now it's in the correct folder. Let's see what that does. So that's a lot better way better and these images are so big we'll go ahead and sort that out i am going to go ahead and paste in a bunch of classes and i'm also going to add text md this one we're just going to call it women's and we're going to end up displaying four categories so we're going to copy this paste 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 so this one will be men's this one will be kids this one will be home goods. Actually, these buttons are going to be links. Let's go ahead and change that to link. This one, this one, this one, this one. We're going to just have href equals hash. Now let's see if that helps our styling a little bit. It's starting to get there. Let's take a look. I think this big image might be throwing everything else off. So let's go back and we'll start from the bottom up. So here's our container with our text. And if we go up, we have this link, which is supposed to be our images. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this now and we're going to copy this four times. Now let's try and look and see what we have. For one, we're missing that blue header up here. So I think that that's in the app layout. We have the head up top, navigation. This lots header needs to come out. Okay, let's see if we can get that to show. Okay, so now that's showing. And let's see if we can sort out this spacing in here. The only thing that I had to do to get it to work right, the styling on it is fine. Okay, as you can see, the images are displayed correctly. We have the black background. The only thing I needed to do was restart both of the servers and either one of them, it was probably the one for NPM was just sort of conflicting with something. I'm not sure, but I restarted both the servers and the styling came back up. So now we're good to go.
Let's go ahead and take a look. These don't go anywhere yet, which is fine. Now that we have it looking like we want it to look, we can start extracting some of these components. So the first thing that I want to do is grab this navigation and pull it into its own component. Let's head back to the text editor. And that head is, it's this navigation right here. Let me make this smaller. The only thing that we need from it is probably this log out. So let's go ahead and grab this. We'll just take this because right now this component is 170 something lines. Let's grab it. And here we can just put nav. And then down here we can just say import nav from. We need a folder for it. So we'll just say that components that'll be the name of the folder that we have it in and we'll just call it nav and down here we can just go ahead and add nav let's go ahead and create that it's going to be a components folder and then the file will just be nav.u okay so some template strings or tags we'll put that in there we need our script tags and actually i want to grab i'll grab all of this Uh, because this is a new defined component from view and so we want to make sure that that's on every page okay and what do we need from here let's see we need the link we don't need the head but we do need the link we don't need the title because that's already coming in from the app layout and we don't need this nav in here because it is the nav component and we do need log out from here so that should be good let's go in here and take out the things we don't need anymore so we don't need the jet links anymore we do need the props we don't need these and we don't need this I'm not mistaken I think that's everything head nav and we don't need the links either so we can grab that from here and remove it from here okay so let's go back and see if that's the same or if we get any errors okay it looks the same we hover that goes back to the welcome register login uh, which we don't have yet and those are all the same okay fantastic so the next thing I want to do is grab these buttons and uh, we're going to have these in a few different places, so I want them in their own component. So those buttons are in, they're not in the nav. I think we're done with this one. We can close this one out. And now those buttons are in here. These buttons right here. So how we're going to do this is really simple. We're going to actually start putting the component in here first, and then we'll add it to this. We need a folder, and we're going to call it buttons. And then the first button that we're going to have is gray button dot view we need some template tags we're going to need two different things we're going to need a link and this link is going to have an href of href is we want them to be dynamic we're going to list a bunch of classes for it and then we're going to give it a conditional saying if as equals href and then in here we'll add plot because we're going to be using this gray button component for both links and buttons, that's why we're setting it up this way. So now we can say button, and the class is going to equal classes. And then here we're going to have B else. And again, slots. Okay, so let's go ahead and define our script. Keep forgetting this, but it's going to be export default define component. We're going to need the link. Under the components, we're going to add our props. This is going to be an array. We're going to have active, href, and as. Again, we're going to be either using these as links or as buttons. So if this link, if it's showing up and it says v if, if we have an as set in that link within our other components that we're using this, if we have a set to href, that's what's going to display as the link. If not, it's going to display as a button. It's going to have the same classes though. This is just how we're defining it. Under the props, we're going to say computed, and now we're going to define the classes here. Turn. And those are our classes for our button. This define component is going to be coming from view directly, so we don't need to have that. We'll just say view. And we also need to import link. 
these are important changes that were made shortly after Inertia started using Vue 3. It's very simple. They're just components that we're bringing in. So if you've ever seen one of my projects before and you see Inertia Link where it's Inertia Link. This is the same exact thing as this, except now it's a component that is given to you from Inertia. That's all that that is. Okay, so now we should be good here. Let's go ahead and bring it into the welcome page. For this first one, we can just do gray. Again, we'll just say women since we don't have the categories yet. But in here, we need to add as equals href. That's what we defined it in the button component. We have to give the link for it, which we don't have yet. So we'll just say hashtag. The only extra class that we need on here is text MD. And now we can get rid of all of these. And this I'm going to copy four times or copy it and paste it three times. Now this will be men's, this will be kids, and this will be home goods. So now we have to import this gray button. And we'll import gray button from components, gray button, I think it's in our buttons folder, buttons, gray button. Okay, so now under here, gray button, fantastic. Let's go ahead and make sure these haven't changed. Okay, looking good, and they look the exact same. Fantastic. The next thing that I want to do is because we have our icons here and we're going to be using several more of them, I want to create a component for that as well. What that means is we can take this, we'll paste it into the components folder, and we'll rename it icons. I completely keep forgetting that I have an extension for that. <laughs> it's fine. So let's take out this close this one so we don't get them confused. We'll take out this. We'll take out the computed. Now the only prop that we need in here is name. Now what we can do is in the nav, here it is. We'll grab the SVG. We'll go to the icon and in here we can just go ahead and paste it in. Now I've already shrunk these down and I've shown you plenty of times how to do that. From here we can just take out this styling and then we need to do vf name equals cart and now in the nav we can just put icons Actually, I'm going to call this icon since it's just one and I'll show you why in a bit. The name equals cart. The class, it'll be the same thing. It'll just be what we added. So that should be good. Actually, this one is going to be, I'll copy this one. I'm going to get rid of the text red from that one because in the other spot that we have this, we're going to do the same thing. And that one's going to have the text red. Now we have to actually import this icon. And there are two ways that we can do it. The first is we can go ahead and do it the same way that we do the other icons. However, I like to use these icons specifically globally so they could be anywhere in the app. If we ever create possibly a back end and we need some icons in there we can use it back in there too without having to import the icon for it the other option is you can do it globally now that is my particular preference with these you can do it any way you want it is your app once you start building it it is your app and you can make it however you want so for me i'm going to do it globally so here i'm going to say import icons from at components icons or I think in here it might need to be dot instead. So I'll put that down here in our create inertia app. We're going to say dot component icon. because That's what we named it in the template that we're using it in icons. Again, personal preference. You can do it however you want. You can do the same thing in the app the way you would any other component. This is how I in particular choose to do it. So let's go ahead, refresh, and that should still be the same. 
So our components is still there. And the other thing is if we inspect, because I haven't actually shown you this yet, is if you shrink it down, okay, you see our sizing works for mobile sizes. We have it here. And we also have our styling in here. And it looks like we're getting an error somewhere. Failed to load. Oh, browser sync. I want to go turn that off real quick. So app.blade. I don't really use browser sync, so I'm just going to comment it out. If you want to keep it, you can. If not, you don't have to. And that should get rid of that error for us. No more error. Let's open this up. We can close this. From here, I want to do two things with this um, footer down here. The first is I want to make it into its own component. And the other thing is going to be a special bonus for you guys. Okay, so make sure you stick around. Let's go ahead to our... We can close this... And I am going to take this one and duplicate. We're going to call it footer. In the app layout, I can grab that footer. Go ahead, before I forget, take this out. Paste this. Okay, we don't need any of this stuff. We'll get rid of this and we'll get rid of the method. Let's go and make sure that that's coming through. Go back. And now what I want to do is I want to give a different message every time this page loads. What I did and I when I did the to-do list with uh, Laravel and Livewire, I remembered that Laravel has all of these, uh, where are they? has these quotations. I can't remember where they are right now, but they're always random quotes that I like. And so I wanted to try to implement something like that at the bottom of our page right down in here so that every time it refreshes, then you would get a new quote. So how we're going to do that is we're going to create another file right in the JS folder. We're going to call it quotes.js. And in it, I'm going to paste in a whole bunch of code we're going to have a const of quotes and these are pretty much all of the <laughs> the random quotes for that are built into Laravel they're baked right in uh they're funny little saying so an unexamined life is not worth living Socrates and just so every time the user refreshes they'll be able to see something like that so now in this footer right here we are going to first take this out I want a variable in here called random quote in our imports, we're going to import that file. For data, we're going to return quotes from quotes. And then under this data section now, we're going to have a computed property. That computed property is going to be random quote, one S or two, just one. And now we're going to return this quotes. Okay, we need some regular brackets. And then we're going to say math floor. And this is JavaScript stuff. What it's going to do is it's going to take the amount of quotes that we have. And uh, let's see, times this quotes dot length. Let me make sure I got everything. It's taking the quotes property that we're bringing in from the quotes file. And we're defining it here. It's returning this quotes. It's taking the whole length of the quotes, it's timesing it by math random, uh, by the amount that there are, okay? Which means that it'll just randomly display on each refresh. Let's give this a try and see, okay? The best way to take care of the future is to take care of the present. Let's try another one. Happiness is not something ready-made. It comes in your own actions. Dalai Lama. Very cool. I think this is a nice little touch. You don't have to use it if you don't want to, so this is a little bit of a bonus. This app layout, which was 170-something lines, is now only 40-something, and we did a really good job of just pulling everything out, and that's how we'll be able to use these components. And this is the theme of this project, is to make things as reusable as possible. If you want to support the channel, go ahead and click the thumbs up. I'll see you guys next time.